Thank you very much for the organizers to inviting us to share experiences in terms of uh, mobile insurance. And basically the biggest question is how do we rise to uh, the regulatory challenge? I just want us to start from this particular context. And uh, Craig has shared a bit of uh, the Kenyan landscape in terms of mobile insurance. And basically what you see here is a pastoralist in, in a rural area in Kenya. And what he's trying to do is to send some money, or basically he's receiving some money from his son working in the urban area. So he's just checking how much money has been sent to him. Um, at that particular point in time also, he's looking after uh, the cattle uh, in the field. Uh, based on the numbers, and uh, what you will see is that Kenya has a tremendous uh, mobile uh, population, whereby we have 38 million Kenyans out of a population of 50 million that have uh, mobile phones. Uh, over 90% mobile penetration. Uh, so much is being transacted online using, MP using M-Pesa. And M-Pesa has been one of the highlights in Kenya, uh, basically after a at, 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 uh, long distance running. So you basically have to look at that, at uh, what we do in the fields, and also uh, what we, we are doing in terms of the financial uh, inclusion. Now, over forty percent of Kenyans are nowadays own smartphones, um, and fourteen million users are on mobile internet. So this really gives us uh, a very uh, big step in terms of uh, in terms of uh, using technology. Now, mobile insurance, basically, what it brings, it kind of enables us to go and manage to get that particular usage. Uh, we are able to have significant reach to clients and also uh, it kind of enables us to have a significant scale over and above uh, a number of issues that come around about it. So one of the biggest issues is that there are a lot that has been changed in the Kenyan market and uh, the biggest question is that how then do regulators confront these particular changes? That has been a very big question in terms of how do we ensure uh, that we have regulatory uh, framework that really supports innovation uh, due to the ever-changing uh, technological aspects in our markets. So supervisors have to really kind of come up with an appropriate balance, a balance that will enable innovations uh, to come into place, a balance that will also ensure that there are a lot of benefits that are there to the users of uh, insurance products. So what we've been trying to do is uh, how then do we balance this, regulations and innovation? One of the biggest fear for so many people in the world, uh, especially companies, is regulations. No one really wants to, to have something as a regulatory uh, standard that you have to follow. One of the biggest also hindrances that you are able to see is that many regulators don't have what we call regulatory clarity in terms of how do they perceive innovation? How do they uh, deliver in towards ensuring that their, their, their economic benefits uh, to their operations? Because uh, what we've seen, uh, regulatory uh, systems or standards kind of uh, increase the cost of uh, doing business. How do we enhance the competition? Because you'll be able to see that one aspect that really makes a company gain a competitive edge is by using new uh, regular uh, new innovations and uh, uh, maybe new products that are quite innovative. How do we also boost financial inclusion? And how do we deliver convenient financial services? So that is a very important aspect that regulators need to think about. And it's, this is all about having an optimal regulation. That's basically an environment that kind of uh, ensures that providers have uh, are able to, pro to, to provide products that uh, consumers are happy uh, to buy. At the same time, it doesn't really weaken the financial system. Because mo most of the time, you'll be able to realize that uh, innovations can, in a way, weaken the financial uh, systems. Uh, whereby, after some time, you get that the product has failed. Uh, this really brings a very big systemic uh, risk in terms of the reputation of that particular sector. So how do you ensure that these particular aspects 
uh, within that uh, right balance. So there are different approaches uh, that uh, we've taken uh, in, within the Kenyan space. And this is all about uh, embracing the change. And when we talk about that change, uh, what we've seen in the market is that um, innovation has been taken as part of the regulatory culture. We encourage innovation. We, are, we, we, we in a way, familiarize with the new trend as a regulator. And this really brings up a very important aspect whereby companies can see the potential future in terms of uh, how do they share uh, the new ideas that are coming uh, within, the, 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 within that particular space. So it's quite important to have uh, an, a, 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 a regulator that thinks through and also uh, embraces that particular change. Second aspect is more of uh, uh, having that collaboration. And you'll be able to see that there are different approaches that have been taken in the past uh, within the Kenyan space. And one of the items that you will see is that uh, we've seen uh, what we call uh, microinsurance regulations being uh, developed. We've seen uh, the regulator in Kenya uh, basically uh, licensing uh, the technical technological service providers, the mobile phone operators, as form of intermediaries. So within that particular channel, you allow those particular providers to operate within a certain uh, framework. Also, there's a lot of what we call partnerships with uh, different players in the market. And these, uh, what has been done is, there's what we call service level agreements between maybe an insurance company that is a risk taker and also uh, maybe a technical, technological company that kind of provide that platform. What the regulator really needs to understand is what are the level agreements that these particular uh, partners have put in place. So what we've seen is that this collaboration therefore enable, enables us to kind of provide an informal advice uh, on the first stage. Thereafter, trying really to understand what, uh, what, what that particular company is trying to provide. And that has been enabled by having a quite a modernized uh, regulatory uh, standard or framework, which we call risk-based uh, supervision framework. And this particular framework looks at uh, the scale and the nature of, of, of the business strategy that companies have put in place. Another thing is that we are currently uh, coming up with what we call a regulatory sandbox. And what this really means is that we are coming up with a safe space in which businesses will be able to come up with innovative products, uh, uh, different services in terms of distribution, uh, how do they deliver that without really incurring um, normal regulatory consequences. This really spurs innovators and accelerators to come into the market space. Um, within that, what we realize is that some of uh, innovations might not really only fit within the insurance space. They might go wider than insurance. You might get that it's a change that is affecting the technological company. It's a change that is affecting the capital markets. So what we've done is that also financial sector regulators are coming up with a policy uh, framework to ensure that if there's an innovation that is cross-cutting, how will this be coordinated within uh, the financial sector? Another thing is that we've been working on innovation hubs, and, uh, uh, and, and this is basically to encourage uh, innovation teams, not only at the regulators' uh, uh, residence, but also uh, within the insurance company. So we, uh, within this particular space, we tend to monitor trends and market activity that tends to build and maintain relationships towards uh, insure tech players and identify those potential scenarios uh, that will increase partnerships. So at the moment, the biggest question is that can we really manage to get to that particular level where each and every person within the Kenyan space has, has, a, has, has some coverage? The answer can be yes, the answer can be no, but is it only through technology? So what we've been trying to do is that we've been trying to kind of pick the consumer needs to be at the forefront, and that is embedded with what uh, technology provides in ease of, uh, of doing that particular business. 
as a regulator also been participating uh, within the in inclusive insurance lab uh, innovation lab and this basically a, a sequence of national workshops and international platforms whereby key stakeholders meet to discuss uh, the future of the industry how do we ensure vulnerable businesses and people have some form of coverage just to conclude this is a very difficult balance to maintain in terms of the regulatory field once the regulator really provides that clarity the biggest question is then how do we balance the two how do we ensure there is consumer protection at the same time there is market development technology will drive on the market development side but what the regulators are highly concerned with is how do they ensure that the consumers are protected so unless uh, regulators understand this particular context it will be very difficult uh, to ensure that the market is growing uh, to a particular standard because most of the time they'll be highly concerned with the issues of how do we protect our customers not really understanding how do they continually develop the market so with if a regulator or a regulatory body enables this particular aspect then it means that uh, we are going to manage uh, that particular growth in terms of uh, enabling innovations and innovators uh, to operate within uh, the market space. Now, uh, this, is my qu this is a question. Yes, um, my question was, uh, could technology lead to financial exclusion? And maybe you can access that. Yeah, so, okay, perfect. So uh, my question was, could uh, financial uh, or technology lead to uh, exclusion, financial exclusion? Yes. Well, the answers were yes, no, and still unsure. Hands up for yes. Could, could lead to financial exclusion. Yes, exclusion. Not inclusion, exclusion. So how many are for yes? How many are for no? How many are un still unsure? How many don't have an answer? <laughs> uh, whereby you could have left your question blank. So I think uh, it's quite interesting uh, to kind of look at that particular question. Uh, technology, most of the time we link it, we link it to what we call uh, financial inclusion. But it, it, can, it can go both ways. Uh, dependent on where you want to, where you want, how you want to look at it. So, for instance, uh, for technology that is highly driven by mobile phones, in a way, can lead to financial inclusion, whereby you can be able to reach, uh, you can have a, a, a greater reach. But if you look at uh, things like, uh, say, uh, telematics, uh, whereby uh, maybe some persons uh, might not be insured based on their risks. If you look at uh, health uh, gadgets that currently most of us have, uh, it can lead in a way to some people being excluded uh, in coverage. So it's something that will really depend on which aspect of uh, technology we, are, we intend to, to push as a market. So it's not only that technology will, will, will lead to inclusivity. One thing is that we may need to ensure that the needs of the clients are met. We need to create that client value to, uh, to, to, to our consumers and also ensure that uh, their insurance needs are, are what we highly focus on. So technology really comes as, as an added advantage to make it easy. Uh, for an institution to run its uh, operations. Thank you.